up, everybody? Long time no see. It's your favorite subpar mediocre mechanic over here in Tucson, Arizona. Now, we got something important that we want to share with you guys, and that's um, some AC knowledge. Out here, it real hot, okay? We like making sure that people be frosty when they're driving around. And this one is not doing that. So I wanted to kind of give you a rundown on what to check if the AC in your car is kind of working like shit. So we have a 98 Toyota RAV4 here uh, with a hundred and, I don't know, something thousand, maybe 200 something thousand. and kind of looks like it's closer to 200. Uh, but the initial customer complaint is obviously AC is not working that good, right? So the first thing that we're gonna check is, all right, I got ahead of myself here. First off, if your car made any kind of exploding sounds, there was hissing, there was refrigerant smell, right? This is not a video for you. You should probably take your car in and get your system checked out. You probably got some bigger things going on. Let's say it started getting warmer where you live and the AC just doesn't seem like it's hitting like it used to. This video is for you. First thing we're gonna check is pressures, right? Uh, I have a little machine here that has the gauges and stuff built in it. You might need to um, get some gauges for cheap. You can rent them at O'Reilly, I believe, um, or you can get them at, you know, like Harbor Freight or something. So we're gonna go ahead and start it up and we're gonna check our pressures first. What I'm gonna say here is uh, some movie magic, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a little chart up that's gonna show you uh, pressures relative to ambient temperature. If that sounds like uh, witchcraft or something that you don't understand, then this probably also isn't the video for you. Um, but essentially the high side will change in relation to the ambient temperature slightly, right? But in general, in general, it's about 90 out. We should be seeing at least 200 on the high side and around 40, 45 on the low. And what we're seeing is categorical of just an undercharge. Uh, we'll go ahead and post that little chart right there, right here so that you can kind of see where your pressures sit in relation to uh, this. But it's looking like this one leaked down somewhere, right? So what's the next step? So the next thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna shut it off. And then our fancy machine here, we're gonna go ahead and suck down the refrigerant. You probably don't have this machine. You should take it to a shop and have your AC evacuated properly. Don't just dump it out into the atmosphere and be that dickhead. No one likes that dickhead, okay? You make us all have a bad rap if you're that guy, right? So don't do that. Take it to a place, have it evac down. Generally, the way we do it, like when we get customers to come in, we charge them half the price of a regular AC service to just suck it down, and then the other half when they come back for the refill. And a regular just suck and fill on an AC system is not expensive, so just get it done right. So we're gonna go ahead and set this to recover, and we're gonna see how much refrigerant comes out relative to the quantity that's supposed to be in there. And it looks like on this one, oh wow, this is a pretty good sized system. For a little tiny car like this, it's supposed to take 1.65 pounds uh, for reference, on slightly newer vehicles, uh, 134A system on like a sedan, probably around one pound. So this should be a nice cold system once uh, we got to charge back up. All right, it might be a little hard to see on the screen, but we only recovered uh, three tenths of a pound, which means this thing was incredibly low. And if you've made it to this part in the video, uh, now's where you get all the knowledge, okay? So, um, you know, maybe at the beginning we can put a thing where it tells you to just fast forward to this part if you're really impatient. Um, I know that most people who watch YouTube are pretty impatient. 
and they just want the knowledge. I know I'm one of those people. So here we are, the refrigerant's out. You took it to a shop, they sucked it down for you, right? You wanna do it yourself because you want that confidence of knowing that it was done correctly, right? So uh, the refrigerant's all pulled out of it. I'm gonna show you what the number one thing is that leaks in your AC system. That sounds like a clickbait title, doesn't it? Let's uh, go ahead and close these valves. All right. All right, drum roll, drum roll. Are you ready? For what? To find out what you've been waiting for this whole video. The number one thing that leaks on an AC system is these. The little valves inside here, right? On both sides, I just go ahead and replace them. They normally cost like a couple bucks a piece. Uh, you need one of these tools. Okay, it's just got a little Schrader valve tool, right? You can pick this up um, at O'Reilly or whatever when you pick up the proper valves for your car. So you're gonna go ahead and start by swapping these out. And uh, the, shit, then we're gonna give it a charge and see what happens. Keep in mind that this is a system that has never been touched since 1998. It doesn't already have UV dye in it. So what we're gonna do is swap valves. We're gonna do a vacuum test on it. And as long as it passes the vacuum test, we're gonna go ahead and charge it up and put a little bit of UV dye in there. Some of this creepy slime ooze that looks like the shit that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles got into. We're gonna go ahead and inject that in here um, and that's going to show us where we have a leak, if there's a leak later down the road. So what we're doing right now is uh, playing a really uninteresting video game. No, we're, so it's doing the vacuum leak test right now. Um, essentially, it's pulled a vacuum on the system, and we're checking to make sure that, essentially, you know, we've got duration of time, right, across here, and then uh, the amount of vacuum and we just want to see that on the graph that it stays in the green zone over the course of about five minutes so that we know that if there is a leak it is very very small and uh it appears as though it's gonna probably pass pretty well actually should be all good to charge her up when this is done we'll put some of that uh leak detection dye in there we'll charge it up and then uh i'll show you guys what you got to check after you do that we got the smiley face means we're gonna go ahead and uh, inject some of that dye in there. Boom. All right, I had a feeling this thing was gonna have nice cold AC. So we got 99 degrees ambient temperature, 48 coming out of the vent, which means we got a 51 degree split at idle. That's really good. That's really impressive actually. Um, if you guys want to do this test on your car, all you need is two little thermometers. So you get one of the little baby guys that goes inside your AC vent, like where I have our other attachment there hooked up. Um, and then another one that's outside and that'll show you the difference between outside and inside. Um, pretty standard numbers at idle is like around 35 to 40 degree split. Uh, anything more than that is like in the exceptional realm, which is what we always shoot for here. System seems to be working pretty good. So the next step and the last step is gonna be, now that we have the dye in there, go take it for a spin, and then we're gonna shine the uh, UV light on there. We're gonna see if we got any dye creeping up. What I like to do is start at the firewall, and I'll look at the lines all the way back, and kind of follow them. I'll look down to the compressor, check the ports on the compressor, look on the front seal up against the uh, back of the compressor clutch, then I'll follow the lines up, look up to the uh, connections on the condenser, scan across the condenser a couple times. And if you're not seeing anything on any of those areas, but you're still leaking refrigerant out and you don't see any coming out of your valves, but inside the car you have a faint smell of refrigerant, or if you look at the drain valve on the evaporator core underneath the car and there's a little bit of like that UV dye kind of in the drain valve, then you probably need to rip your dashboard out and do your evaporator core. So have fun with that. 
Look at this, dude. It just keeps going down. Now that condenser fan doesn't sound good. Well, that about concludes it for today. This RAV4 has got a way better AC than my car, which is a little saddening, but also I'm gonna have a really happy customer. So catch you guys on the next one. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.